And Dr. Garana Gergic is a lecturer at the US Studies Centre in the Department of Government and International Relations at the University of Sydney and joins me now for more on this. Thank you for coming in. Can you recall another time when MPs of a parliament, of a supposed ally of the United States, were debating whether or not the president should visit? Well, we certainly don't have a recent memory of, of such kind, but what Donald Trump has really managed to do is unite Britain in its condemnation of what seems to be an endorsement of a far-right group. And this is certainly something that has taken this kind of the Trump tweet cycle uh, even broader than just the national confines, where it's usually uh, been seen to basically uh, the relations with one of its closest allies. Do you think that would have been his intention when he retweeted those far-right videos? Well, I think that in the past 11 uh, months of Trump's presidency, what, we've ha what we have noticed is that we uh, have this kind of pattern of president tweeting, everyone reacting. This deflects for, from whatever has been the top of the priorities on the agenda. We get talking about that. We dissect it from all angles. This is why I am here now uh, discussing this. And uh, it gets us talking about these things that might not be the ultimate priority. Uh, for the president, for the administration, for the United States. Having said that, uh, I think it is important to just go back and maybe uh, reflect on the fact that the president of the United States has tweet, retweeted or endorsed a tweet from a far-right group in uh, the UK that has been openly um, uh, sending messages that are anti-immigrant, that are anti-Muslim, and this is unprecedented. He is facing challenges at home and abroad in the foreign policy sphere. Do you think this is part of a strategy to deflect attention from those and how the White House is handling them? Well, certainly uh, it could be one of the reasons. A president is also facing some domestic challenges now in uh, what seems to be a looming uh, government shutdown uh, on December the 8th. There is also this talk about the passing of the tax reform that should be his first big uh, signature uh, uh, policy reform. So certainly there are a lot of things that are kind of in the pipelines but seem not to, to be going uh, further and as, as we said, he is coming close to his first year in office. So maybe uh, it is useful for him to just uh, deflect it, throw some of these shiny objects for us to, to unpack. We're also reporting the speculation today that Donald Trump may be looking to replace his Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson. He certainly didn't have a lot to say when asked about his opinion of him and whether he would keep him in the job today. He just said Rex was here. What is your take on this? Do you think Tillerson is going to remain in this job next year? Well, Rex Tillerson, uh, we should remember, began his uh, career as the Secretary of State by giving one of the first interviews and saying that he actually didn't want this job. His wife made him do it. So uh, I don't think that he would be uh, really... Uh, you know, devastated if he was no longer the Secretary of State. But certainly uh, it seems that uh, the President and the Secretary of State uh, have had so many differences over the past uh, 11 months from uh, Paris climate deal to Iran deal uh, to the uh, Gulf crisis to North Korea. And in all of these uh, matters there has been an opening uh, rift that now seemingly also with uh, some of those comments that uh, that. Uh, uh, went uh, explicitly against President Trump, as was reported by the U.S. media, uh, purport purportedly by by, uh, by Secretary Tillerson. It seems that there isn't a lot, lot of love lost between the two. Do you think the crisis in concerning North Korea could well be influencing Donald Trump's thinking on Rex Tillerson right now? I wouldn't say that it's the major thing, um, but certainly there is a difference of approach. So uh, where Rex Tillerson has been advocating a diplomatic approach and being a sort of good cop uh, to Donald Trump's bad cop and, and the threats of uh, maybe more assertive, even military uh, approach to uh, resolving the uh, North Korean problem uh, has, has been uh, part of that mix. But again, to, to stress that uh, these two men uh, have had no previous experience with one 
one another. And um, certainly that has shown they haven't been able to develop uh, a close uh, relationship. And what we've seen over the past couple of months has really been the widening of that rift between the foggy bottom where the State Department is and obviously the White House. Garana Gagic, thank you for coming in this afternoon.